This is uh, Ian here, a little of his background while we're trying to get the his audio and video connected, or even just audio would be okay. I might have to try to share his audio some other way. Let's see, he does not have the button. Uh oh, that's a bad sign. Yeah, it's got to be the same same login as we gave to uh, registration. That's very important. I, I do have two accounts on my own, and that's why I can uh, broadcast mine behind me. Yeah, if you don't have permissions, you won't get that share button. Uh, as you can see with my other account there. Uh, we might have to share his audio in a, a separate way. We'll have to see here. I, I don't want to lose out. I'm hoping maybe people can hear you through uh, this remote interface. Let's see. Let me try to get that in the second. It's not, it's the, and this is the account we used for uh, signing up the session. Oh, uh -oh. They, they can't they can't hear you, which is probably pretty funny because I'm having a conversation with myself here. This is impressive. Yeah, let me do that. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do this. We'll do this pretty funny, but uh, so he's going to do the data science overview. You know, obviously, as you're hearing, we're having a, a slight technical difficulty with him sharing the audio. So we'll do this uh, the old fashioned way and I'll call him on the phone and hopefully uh, that will sound OK. If not, uh, it's going to be a very interesting time here. Ian, can you hear me? I can, but I have to. I have to so I have to. I have to stand far enough away from the computer so it doesn't just go. Just turn off the audio on the uh, presentation. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, technology at at work here. This is a, a really professional setup okay. I have here. <laughs>
it actually I think it's the inverse of that. Tim, can you hit the next slide, please? You got it. Thanks, sir. So, you know, what we see really is data science is really all of these things and more because it, there are, you know, clearly you've got all the aspects, the three pillars to the school that you've had before, computer science, math, statistics, and domain knowledge. But, you know, really data science, all of these combines is what's an extra thing, right? And that's the way we can look at that. And deep learning fits, you know, fits deeply in this ML space. I have another pretty um, diagram that kind of displays where deep learning fits in this space. So I always like to level set on a conversation we, we think about this with a mixed audience, kind of what, where in the world we're kind of thinking about. Um, next slide. And then what you see, though, you know, the progression of complexity um, of different, like what we think of different levels of data science in the space like this, you've got just you know, strictly statistics and inferral statistics here on the left-hand side. But as you keep getting, as you keep going for the amount of deep learning and even things like edge time prediction, complexity gets higher. And so when you when you think about the whole spectrum of what we're talking about, deep learning is, is much more on the more sophisticated area space of, of the deep, deep or the data science space. Um, and for reasons we'll get into, you, you do need sometimes specialized hardware, sometimes you need large data sets. There ends up being things um, that are prerequisite that you need to really do this well. And then of course, real time prediction has some of its own challenges too. Um, next slide. So, you know, quickly here, um, it just is a level set here. We'll go through these quickly. The descriptive statistics are the types of bar charts, pie charts, the types of things we saw in stats class that you would kind of be used to. Um, things, things that we, you know, meet, you know, media mode, things like that. Next slide, please, Tim. Inferral, it's um, where you can use these things. For example, or just describing, for example, a great example with U.S. Census, for example. Um, next slide, please, Tim. Inferral statistics and inferential statistics rather are things that the census does as well, but you, you actually, it's, it's things you're just taking a sample of the pool of the population you're looking at and then you're inferring what the greater pool would be. Um, the biggest thing, that for the reason that we do this, the reason census do this, is that it would be great to know if, how many people in the country like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It would just take you a very long time to ask. So if you can cut that down to a, a sample that is repository of the larger pool, you can do things like this. Um, Next slide, please, Tim. This is when we start to get to the ML piece of this, um, and we start thinking about unsupervised and, and supervised machine learning. And keep in mind, when we talk about deep learning, you can have unsupervised and supervised deep learning as well. But really, when we start to think about um, machine learning in this space with, the, with unsupervised, we're, we're thinking about um, algorithms that are using data sets that aren't trained. Um, and so without having labels and trained data, the types of use cases that you can apply to these things, whether it's CPU or GPU based ML or deep learning the algorithms, look like this. You need to have a cluster, clustering algorithms are the very common ones. Um, here's neighbors, for example, things of that nature. But then you also have things like anomaly detection. Um, next slide. Um, the different things you can do with unsupervised ML. For example, so clustering and anomaly detection are, are your yeah, most common techniques. Again, you can do this um, with deep learning unsupervised as well. Um, and I like to think of this as a great place for if you're, if you're trying to do um, data preparation or some data engineering using clustering algorithms, for example, customers. If you could, you can take a group of customers and kind of box them down to um, categories. You know, that's kind of like groups. It's easy to do if you can do your steps on as well. So it, you can you can apply unsupervised techniques in different areas of your machine learning pipeline as well. Uh, next slide, please come. Um, I think we skipped the slide. Did I go too far? Thank you. Thank you. You went too far there. Um, all right. I, I might, be, might be flipping the slide here. Um, so, just hit, hit too forward, but just go too forward. Yeah, so when we when we think about supervised machine learning, now we're, we're taking, here we go, we're taking a really great you know, document, really a very image we're looking at here is that we're taking trained data as well. We're going to use that, our labeled data, we're going to use that to train an algorithm on, on patterns. And this is the same thing when we're talking about you know, traditional machine learning or deep learning. If you're doing this, this type of uh, classification, 
question, is it hot dog or is it not hot dog or is it a donut or a bagel, for example, um, progression, you could be, what is what is my home sell? What is my home going to sell for? If you think about all of the real estate apps out there, lots of lots of um, applications for this today. And again, when you get to deep learning, you're doing the same types of process. You're doing the same intensive thing here. You're just using more sophisticated um, techniques to do that to do the same use cases. Next slide, please. Now. And then uh, go ahead. Next slide. So when we start to really think about deep learning, we need to start thinking about um, sort of the animal we're working with is a little bit different here. We do similar things but with a different animal. And when we start to really think about this is neural networks. And this is where the term deep learning actually kind of comes into place here. Um, neural networks, this, this itself is only, there's only one hidden, uh, hidden lane here. And this is a little more fully connected of full receiving neural networks. It's just like your 70s, 1970s kind of style of neural networks. But, Deep learning really comes from a place where you have thousands of these layers, these hidden layers here. Uh, and these are really the engines that, that drive um, the value of, of like what you get out of deep learning. But with that, though, there comes there comes some caveats with performance. There comes some caveats with what you need to do actually harness the powers of these. So, um, hit the next slide here. And, you, and here's, here's a great example of what we see in deep learning. So deep learning is great for computer vision. Technique. So there's classification. Um, again, are these are these um, a male or female based on the way they're walking, for example? So that's a classification problem that we saw earlier. Well, what really is interesting is what we can apply uh, the types of data sets, the types of use cases, the types of data, things that we want to use. We, we can apply to deep learning. So that's what's really kind of interesting about that. But it, it in itself um, somewhere in the, in the lot of nature to traditional ML. Next slide, please, Tim. And then how you know how these things all fit together is this kind of where I'm kind of leaving the whole way. So, um, data science itself is kind of a white canvas here, but you've got AI, you've got traditional computer science, um, artificial intelligence, intelligence theory, and a lot of things that go with that, kind of the expert systems. It's a big umbrella. Right? So it, so when you think about AI, there, there's more than just ML there, for example. And then getting here into the next layer of the of the Russian uh, dolls here is machine learning, right? So ML is a specific set of algorithms. It, it, you know, this is an area of theory of computer science within artificial intelligence that is trying to teach computers patterns, right? And doing that with tra training sets, our, our own training sets as well. And also reinforcement learning, which we didn't talk much about today. And then deep learning itself is a subset of all of these three, specifically ML, is that it's just a more sophisticated set of machine learning techniques to do with that. And what's really great today, we live in a world where there's lots of free libraries right there. Zoos for you know, zoo models, for example. Um, we have GPUs that are you know, relatively cheap. We've got libraries around these things. So, I mean, today we live in a great world. Who's looking at kind of about this space here? Um, and then when I see um, it will be customers or clients, for example, though when I when I see organizations or even individuals, kind of how how they look at this. Is, you need to think of, think of this in layers and levels. So if you want to start from zero to, to, to the hero, you need to start first with your descriptive and inference statistics. Really, descriptive statistics is, is the biggest thing here is that you need to have a really great um, great insight to the data, really build a great foundation on that. Types of things you can get bar charts, different reports, for example, SQL tools, BI tools, right? These are the things that you can do that with. But once you've built this great foundation, now you can start looking for a product approach, and that's where machine learning comes into play, where you're looking to try to predict, you're looking to try to do something that hasn't happened yet, and then make a decision based on that, right? And that's where unsupervised, supervised machine learning, but more in the traditional sense, right? So using CPUs, using a point of all the machine learning, you know, libraries are out there, there are plenty, um, things like IDEs and notebooks today, but we see that. And then finally, moving over, we'll, we'll just talk about the deep learning side there, is that um, you need to really get a good grasp of those things before you, you, you want to be able to walk before you can run effectively. So you, you can do those things first, and then you start to bring in more sophisticated libraries. So you've got the deep learning libraries and the models you can bring in. You can even easy, you think about real-time prediction, computer vision, and things of that nature. So and, and ultimately, even uh, more specifically, hardware that's going to drive that. So GPUs are incredibly important when you think about deep learning just because they're orders of magnitude faster for training these models than you would for CPUs. So 
I mean, I literally need days to minutes is, is, or faster um, as far as training goes. So just, you know, at the end of the day, that's the progression we're looking at. It's, it's all about, you know, starting starting at one level, you know, gaining up and then, and then taking steps for the next layers. And um, computer science is effectively the same thing as a whole. Um, so I think that's my last slide. I'll hand it back to you, though. Yeah, now we don't have to do this over the phone here. <laughs> yeah, we can, uh, we'll hang up and I'll, I'll, uh, um, I'll, I'll leave this on you, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry for the technical issues there. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're able to hear what uh, Ian was talking about. Uh, we'll have the slides here, and he's got some uh, great GitHubs and some other materials that we'll publish in the future. I'm Tim Spann. If you were around yesterday, I was in a couple tracks around streaming. So how does streaming have to do with uh, deep learning? Well, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of things. Some, somehow these talks connect, and the connecting thing is, is streaming. So uh, I've done parts of this talk uh, before. Uh, this is the latest, greatest version with that great intro from Ian. Because before I just kind of dive into it, because I'm a data engineer, I want to get data to uh, work with these algorithms. So I will include links here to the uh, previous three or so sessions that I've done to make taking these data science products and making them available to people is uh, I've been able to enable them into NiFi directly. Apache NiFi is uh, a tool I've talked about a lot. This really allows you to do some of the, the basic level streaming of grabbing things from somewhere like behind me i've got uh, a jetson and an nvidia xavier and some raspberry pis they all have cameras i'm running deep learning there but at a minimum i'm grabbing camera images this could be whatever you need camera Im images for i've got it on a real-time vehicle we send those camera pictures into nifi because it can accept images and as those images come in, I can push them through a uh, processor, what we call these boxes. And I have one that does MXNet. I've got one that's using a newer framework, uh, Deep Java Library. This is from the same people as MXNet. It works with all those MXNet things you had before, but it's really fast in Java, which is helpful for Apache NiFi and some other projects. Uh, out of the box, you get pre-built models for action recognition, classification, segmentation, uh, question and answer, sentiment analysis. And it's using not just MXNet models, but uh, today I'll show you two processors I wrote that use this engine to run PyTorch models. You can also run TensorFlow and Onyx. So this really opens up all those models wherever you build them, whether you build them in something like Cloudera Machine Learning Tool, your own Jupyter Notebook, some uh, cloud-based tool, you get those models or use a pre-built one, and you can deploy that as part of uh, a stream. Now you saw that difficulty scale as you're moving up the chain into deep learning. One thing that happens is, yeah, you built a model, which was awesome. You spent how many hours or very expensive GPUs or TPUs training them. You have this great model. How do I get it to the place where the data is? And with Apache NiFi, I can put those models right in the place where they need to be, whether that's in Minify at the edge, in process where, we're, where we are. And one of those ways is to have these native processors in NiFi so I could just have a model there. Like for here, I've got one that does... Uh, SSD, so single shot detection on these images that they're coming in. After this session, in the chat is Paul Vidal. He and I have a, a session after that, which is again focused on uh, the similar topic. He's got a very interesting slant on that. So uh, if you have questions, you can harass him early since he's here. But this processor is very easy to use. You drop it in a directory, NiFi starts using it, you push an image into it, and you get back 
results from this and it also you get a new image and that image has the highlights of where this bounding box is so that's a nice feature uh if you want with the power of knife i could keep that raw image and send it somewhere else so i don't lose it i also have all the results of that deep learning as attributes in NiFi. So you have that as metadata along with your changed image. So it makes it for a really nice way to run models. Uh, now, if you're gonna do wanna create things on your own with DGL, it's very easy. I use uh, Maven, you can also use Gradle. Uh, right now it's in version 0 0.80. I've got to update this slide that changed two days ago. And you just pick a couple of things, pick what kind of thing you want from the uh, pre-trained models, put in some values, build it, and you're ready to go. It took me almost no time to write a processor to do sentiment analysis. And I'll show you uh, a little of the code in IntelliJ since we're at Apache Con, I think it's okay to show code. I don't think people are gonna complain there. And then I also, this one I like better, and I have a, a, a one that actually kind of talks about Paul here, keep you uh, interested, Paul. Uh, the distill BERT model uh, from PyTorch to do question and answers. Now it's not, it's a pre-trained model. So it's not trained on, you know, any corpus interested in the data I have, but it's not too bad. It, it's doing pretty well. So I'll show you a demo of that and uh we'll get out of the slides and go into code which is probably more interesting so first up let me show you the really exciting part you know people like to see dark code screens in uh in intellij <laughs> well this is a, a unit test which i hope everyone does unit tests i i do less than i should what's nice with uh apache nifi is you never have to write java code but if you want to put in your own custom model or custom code, you write your own processor. Writing a NiFi processor is about the easiest thing you're ever going to do. Maven builds you an archetype with all the boilerplate pieces here. You just have to set some parameters and make sure they're here and then call whatever your custom code is. And the custom code here to do DJL is trivial. This is pretty much the entire bit of code to write deep learning. It's calling this model, as you see, I'm calling for this one, object detection. Uh, it's the backbone model. I pass in a couple of options. Here, none, but you could have some. It pulls it out of the model zoo. I applied it to the PyTorch engine. It knows what platform I built this on. So if you're going to build it and deploy it to another uh, kind of uh, server, you're going to have to build it there or use a pre-built model. Maybe I could pre-build it for, uh, it has them for Linux, Mac, and Windows. You can pre-build it and have that deployed. And then it picks the engine. Here I just look at the top five models, and then I just put them into a, a result class so I can return it. So when you get to returned, it shows up in uh, NiFi, and we'll uh, show you what that looks like. I still have a couple more minutes here before we got to go to that next session. I think we have, what do we have, 10 minutes? I think we have, or five minutes? Five minutes, I think. So let me show you that. So what I use this processor for, as you see, you can figure out what the model is here. What kind of resources did you use? Now, because it's uh, a pre-trained model and I'm just running classification, I'm running this on my laptop, which is an old PowerBook. There is no GPU here. Uh, it's a very old CPU, nothing impressive. Running the models, I don't need anything. Now, I do have edge devices behind me, and we'll talk about the Coral AI in the next session, and we can, uh, you could do some training on these. I have a Xavier NX that has enough GPU to do some minor training, especially with the new NVIDIA Jetpack. That's kind of outside of Apache. But for what we're doing here, no GPU. And this would run, it could run on a, yeah, Jetson's great. It could run on a Raspberry Pi, 
generally we run minify on a raspberry pi because the resources are low but if you get that new eight gig one you can definitely run nifi nifi is uh has this gui so it, there's a little bit of overhead there but if you run it on an eight eight gig machine like the new raspberry pi that'd be plenty i don't need gpu for running this um uh, let's see if we got any data to send to that one i also have a couple of other ones that I just did for for natural language. Let's see if we have any data floating around. Try to pass some data to people. Let's see. That's not an image. I should run that one. But let me just show you uh, what we can do with that. I have one here that is doing uh, sentiment analysis. Ooh, I left that running. Probably a lot of a lot of messages there. Uh, NiFi lets me run things on a schedule, so I might have scheduled a lot. So what I'm doing here is this is the one for uh, Q and A. So I pass in a question, pass in a description, and then I get the results back. Uh, I, I've ran this for a couple of hours now this morning, and then we could see the results with a NiFi. This was the data that came in. It was just a, a JSON feed. And then we could see what uh, the prediction was. So if I didn't have a really good question, I used a generic one, which was why? <laughs> that seemed like a good reason. So this was a news article. And I said, why? And it said it, it made a prediction of a series of words together. So that, that's kind of interesting. I'm going to show you one where I'm calling it via REST API just to trigger uh, some uh, data. And I have, if I could find the right screen, I have a little curl here that says Paul Vidal likes Magic the Gathering. And then the question is, he likes what? So let's see what we get here. I sent that REST call into NiFi. NiFi got it. Oh, uh, it didn't like that question right now. Sorry, Paul. Did we get our sentiment analysis on Paul? We probably did. Let's see what the sentiment is on that one. We got our results back. Uh, this was a different one. We have, I accidentally ran a lot of data through here. So I, I put it in the raw classification so you could just see that if you wanted to parse this on your own. And I used to put individual fields. So this was a very neutral statement. There's about 50-50 on it. So it's probably just an informational statement that came in from news. Yeah, that's just describing uh, Azure files. So nothing too controversial there. I think we are out of time and I don't want to take up someone else's time. We have a session right after this with Paul. So come out of here, go back in there and then look for Edge to AI with uh, Edge to Cloud with Paul Vidal and me. Actually, that's at 2.15. It's 2.05. Maybe we have a little longer. I don't see a red light coming on. So I'll push it a little bit longer here. So if you looked at the uh, results, I was pushing these to Slack channels. So uh, it's a very nice way for me to debug things is just send information to Slack as I'm doing these uh, analytics. And it's a pretty straightforward thing to do. So let's see if I can pass in and get us an image. Thought I had some floating around. As you can see, there's that coral he was talking about. This one, I have a jet bot. This is a, a Raspberry Pi running a, a Movidius accelerator. I've got one that's running a coral accelerator. There's a bunch of different ones. I should have been sending some data here. I forgot to send a bunch of data. I should probably start up all these uh, Minify agents here. The Xavier has, uh, I have three cameras on it. So that's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of data there. I'm going to start up my Minify agents so I can uh, start sending data. I forgot that I stopped all these because I was uh, running some other stuff. 
and we'll start sending a whole bunch of data in. I think I got a couple of minutes. Maybe we'll get some data in that time. Uh, if you're interested, all this is in GitHub. So if you want to uh, take a look at these models, maybe put your own in here instead of using mine. Some of these, they have the option of switching engines. So if you want to try a PyTorch version of a model or an MXNet version or a TensorFlow version and see what the results are. Now, for some of them, you had to pick one or the other. Like for uh, BERT, the MXNet model is not trained on all the uh, parameters, so you have to limit the some of the sizes there. That proved to be a pain, so I switched to doing uh, uh, just PyTorch, but you could do uh, the same for the other ones. Uh, pretty straightforward. What's nice is you don't have to do any of this coding if you're just going to download and use the model that I pre-trained. Let's see if we can get some data in here. I don't have any images yet. Oh, some data is coming through. Give me one image. That's what the problem. I have like thousands of sensors, but uh, not as many cameras as I should have. Now, I do have a, uh, a NiFi processor that grabs your webcam. I'm afraid to grab my webcam while we're doing this uh, presentation. We've had enough uh, audiovisual issues with this. I don't really want to break that. But the, the process is pretty straightforward. This, if anyone has any more questions, uh, we got Paul and Ian on there and uh, John Kuchmek, who are all kind of experts here. You can see my exciting images here from uh, previous captures. I don't know how it thinks that's a boat. That's one of the pictures from one of the devices. Uh, it looks like it's taken a picture over my uh, NVIDIA jet boot. And so that's probably the Xavier. And it's it figured out who I was even from the back of my head. So that's pretty cool. I'm not sure where it thinks a boat is. And then I had another project, a, a different algorithm analyze this picture that already had the annotations on it. So that gets a little uh, a little weird there. I know this kind of looks like a chair, but maybe not. I think I, I ran down our time sufficiently here. Uh, join me and Paul in the next session in a few minutes. Hopefully all the audio and visual work properly there. If you have any questions, I've got this session and then we've got uh, one more at uh, 255, which is going to be a really cool one. My friend Sunil did some awesome IoT stuff. It should be pretty awesome. So. Uh, I'll see you in the next session. Thanks for joining.